Hey YouTube, today I want to talk about reef tanks, what they are and how you can get one. Everybody has a different reason to reef, let's find yours. Alright future reefers. If you're watching this video, then that means that you're thinking about a reef tank. And in that case, welcome. I'll do my best to help you decide if reef tanks are right for you or not. I figured I'd start where I did when I got back into reefing in 2018. I had a reef tank back in 2005 and I had to get rid of it in 2006 due to the economy. So in 2018 I decided to try it again and this is the tank that I started with. The tank itself I bought from PetSmart. I believe it was on sale for $125 at the time, and I also had cheap black box lights that I bought off of Amazon, so reefing doesn't have to be that expensive at first if you don't want it to be. But the more research that you do, the less expensive it'll be for you. I suggest researching the types of coral that you may be interested in. I also suggest starting with soft corals such as these because their care requirements are easier for beginner reefers. I suggest starting with a tank as big as you can afford because more water volume lends to water stability, which is what corals need. Basically, when you own a reef tank, you become an amateur chemist. You'll be testing certain water parameters such as calcium and alkalinity and nitrate and phosphate to make sure that they're all in range so the coral will be happy and survive in your tank. It all seems overwhelming at first, but if you slow down and take your time, you'll find it's easier than you thought. And I wouldn't do you any justice if I didn't refer you to where I started in my YouTube journey. I highly suggest going to BRS TV and looking at their 52 weeks of reefing after you watch this video. Or if you don't want to have a full blown reef, you can always have a fish only with live rock tank such as this one. A follower tank is much easier to maintain than a reef tank and it may get you into the habit of testing your water parameters so someday you can step up to a reef tank if you choose to. I chose to have these fish in this tank alone without coral because these types of fish are not suitable for a reef tank in general. I really enjoy this tank though and my favorite fish Puffy is in it as well. Did you hear that guys? I knew I was his favorite. And here we go. This is my 75 gallon SBS tank. This is what I think of when somebody mentions a reef tank. When I first started this tank, I had the black box lights up top and I had just a few frags in it so you could see mostly rock. But it has filled in a lot since then, especially in the last year. A tank like this is for an experienced reefer because the coral in it requires stability more than anything. It is very easy to go out and spend a lot of money on these types of coral and lose them within weeks to months. So patience and stability are key to an SBS tank. So, what are coral? Believe it or not, coral are actually animals, not plants. Special lighting designed for reef tanks are required for coral because they have the proper spectrum and par that they need. Some coral actually eat food out of the water, but generally you don't have to feed them. Keeping your water chemistry in range and stable is important for your coral health. In general, the three types of coral are soft coral, large polyp stony, and small polyp stony. I suggest all beginners start with soft coral because they are easy to care for and they are less expensive. And now for a subscriber request. But seriously, I want to thank all of my subscribers and all of you who watch these videos. I am new to making YouTube content, so I hope to make you videos that you enjoy in the future. Now let's see, where were we? Oh yeah, reef tanks, that's right. As you're watching videos and doing research to decide if you want a reef tank or not, 
there's a few things I'd like you to remember. The first is nothing good happens fast in reefing. Whether you're setting up your first tank or you're trying to solve a problem, trying to rush through it will often cause more problems than solve it. So the patience you give up front will be rewarded later. And another thing to consider is not all reef tanks have to be huge. If you're limited on space, chances are there's a tank that's right for you. It's true that smaller tanks are harder to care for, but they're not impossible. Researching proper maintenance and performing that maintenance will go a long way in keeping that tank healthy. Not to mention that the cost of maintaining a smaller tank is significantly less too. What you're looking at here is the same tank you just saw when I first started it. As you can see, there's not a lot of life in the tank yet, and even though it's cycled, it's still not established. So this is what you will be looking at for your first month or two if you start up a reef tank. And even though it's tempting to add a bunch of color and coral and a whole bunch of stuff to the tank, it's important to just take your time and do it slow. And finally, to help you decide if you want a reef tank or not, here's some eye candy for your enjoyment. Here are a few places to get you started on where to look for reefing gear. As you can see, there are many options with reef tanks. Finding one that fits into your budget and your lifestyle may be easier than you thought. I highly encourage you to do as much research as possible before making that impulse buy. This is Reefer Matt. Thank you for watching my video and happy reefing.